Welcome back to Game Galaxy, and today I'm going to give you an overview of my collection of USB Classic controllers. These controllers are done in the style of old classic video game controllers from the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and so on and so forth. If you're in the market to get one of these, whether to play certain games on Steam or use them with emulators, this is going to be your video. Now I know emulation is a dirty word around here on the YouTube gaming scene, but let me put it in perspective for you. One, one second. This is my Sega Genesis, Sega 32X, and Sega CD mod, uh, thing. This is a beast. Now my job requires me to travel uh, quite a lot, and sometimes I'm away from home for months on end. So trying to place this in a suitcase just takes up a lot of room. Let, let, let's give it a look. So after I got this and everything else in there, there's no room for clothes or much of anything else. So what this, what these controllers allow me to do is uh, I can just pack this in my bag and my computer is a laptop that I bring with me and this is how I can enjoy playing my Sega Genesis games without lugging my actual system and hardware. So let's jump into looking at all the different controllers. The great thing about every one that I show you today is under $20. And that's awesome. I'm going to put all the links uh, to the different products in the description below. First up is the iBuffalo Classic USB Game Controller. This is my favorite and the best controller I'm going to show you from today. As you can see, it's done in the style of the Japanese Super Famicom design and the European Super Nintendo. I love these colors right here. I don't know why they decided to give North America the boring purple you know, design. So, this is great. Out of all the controllers, it just it feels so natural and great. The D-pad is great. The buttons uh, are pretty solid, have good reaction, and they are not noisy. A lot of the other controllers I'm going to show you that are a little cheaper are very noisy when you push the buttons, but these ones feel very great. The select and start have a nice rubbery kind of feeling to them, which is cool, ups the quality. There's a turbo button here, but I don't use turbo because that's for cheaters and that would clear your thing. There's the L and R buttons on top right there, and those feel very, very good, unless you're playing Street Fighter 2, because that is terrible. But this is my favorite. I love these. I've bought my friends these, uh, you know, and they love it. And if you're just looking for a classic, you know, gamepad, whether it's Super Nintendo or not, this is gonna be the one you want, because it just feels so perfect, and it's just so gorgeous. I love it. It's great. Next up is the Hyperkin GN6 Sega Genesis style controller. And this is another great one, and I ended up purchasing this because while I love the iBuffalo, I needed something with a nice six button layout for fighting games like Street Fighter 2. Uh, it's just more natural to use these as your strong, as instead of like the trigger buttons on Super Nintendo. Um, this controller is great. What I love about the original Sega Genesis controller and this one is that the D-pad has is raised and has these diagonal kind of movements. So it's very perfect for semicircle moves in fighting games. And uh, this is a great controller. Um, my only gripe with this and some of the other Hyperkin ones I'm going to show you is they're very noisy. This is imagine playing, uh, you know, Street Fighter. This is just. Very noisy. Not a big deal to me, but it is something to note. Uh, but overall, this is a great controller and it is perfect. This is an original NES controller, also made by Hyperkin. There's also other companies that make these, but I just happened to buy the Hyperkin one since I enjoyed the Genesis one. This is a great controller. It works perfect. It is just the noisiest out of any of them that I have. Um, but after playing Mega Man 2 with this and remembering what it was like to play with one of these, I cannot play any Mega Man game without using this controller, uh, especially you know for emulation. I just I have to plug this one in. It's just it's so perfect. But listen to that noise. That's very noisy. Again, it doesn't bother me, but it is something to note. So uh, it's also a little small. But then again, uh, I think you know original Nintendo controllers were a little small. Again, these have the rubbery finish right here, and it's just you know. It's a good controller for your Nintendo. Now, this is about generic as it gets for a DualShock kind of controller. I believe the brand is called Donop or something like that. And I originally purchased this to play the Final Fantasy games on Steam. 
and you know it works just fine the you know the analog sticks feel good and d-pad is a little stiff so this would be atrocious to use this uh, d-pad for a fighting game um, triggers feel good also very noisy uh, but this when I bought it was about eight dollars and it's good if you're gonna play an RPG but there is one negative about this and that is the d-pads have no sensitivity of in-between movements so it's either even if you're pressing it a little it's all the way left or all the way right and so I was playing Sonic Adventure on Steam and if I was going around a loop if I was trying to ease into it there was no uh, control of Sonic he was just slamming into the wall left slamming right and so this is not good for a very precision game like Sonic where you need but it's perfect if you're just playing a simple RPG where you need to move around your character and you don't feel like using the keyboard or the mouse. Now if you want a way better DualShock style controller, the Logitech Gamepad F310 is what you want. It is affordable and works very, very well. I will say, when I even when I, it's so weird. When I took this out of the package and held it, I thought it felt very weird and very uncomfortable. And as I'm doing this video, I feel kind of the same way, that it just feels weird. Now the weird thing is, when I go and play a game playing this, it feels great. It, it's just comfortable when I'm playing a game. But when I'm just sitting here like really studying and thinking about it, I don't like how it feels. And that kind of disappointed me when I first got it. But this was what I bought to test with Sonic Adventure off Steam. And this has the precision control, where I can control Sonic around that loop really nicely with these uh, you know, precision sticks. So uh, this is a much better controller and honestly um, even, though, even though the iBuffalo is my favorite if you're just looking to get one controller for all your gaming needs and not spend a lot of money this is going to be the pad you want to get because it covers I mean, everything. It's got you know, your front face buttons here, um, we got a back button like for Xbox start, a mode button, d-pad here, which I don't like. I, I don't like the d-pad. It's, it's bad and clicky and weird. And then there's, uh, you know, the sticks feel great. And then you've got two, you know, L2, R2, R1, R1. And yeah, I like this one a lot. Here is a Nintendo 64 style controller by Retrolink again. This, um, I mean, I just have to say, in the first place, this is one of the stupidest designed controllers ever. I've always hated the Nintendo 64 controller. I think it's dumb. However, you can't play a Nintendo 64 game without using it. You just have to. Um, but this, you know, I only used it once because I don't really do emulation with N64 because I don't think it works right. There's nothing like playing on the real system. And maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but I think the emulators don't really do a good job. Um, but, you know, this one felt great, it worked fine, I tested it with Mario 64, and it worked great, you know. The buttons, again, they feel good, but, you know, like other Retrolink controllers, they're just a little noisy. But you've got your triggers, you know, the Z button. Um, they have this here, but I, yeah, that, this is just for show. You, you can't plug in any kind of rumble pack or anything, this is just, you know, for the sake of it. Unless I'm wrong about that, but... I don't see any connections up there. <laughs> I think it's just for look. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty decent one. And the final controller I just got in the mail the other night is a GameCube style controller, again by Retrolink. Uh, I tend to, because I have liked you know every other controller that I've bought from them, I tend to gravitate to their name. And they do a great job. This is probably uh, underneath the eye buffalo this is probably the most accurate and best feeling controller to the real thing this truly feels like a gamecube controller i couldn't tell the difference i you know even if you can you know gamecube controllers had that very incremented directional on this pad and this one has it too and it's very you know it's hard to tell the difference perhaps i, I mean the d-pad always kind of blew on on gamecube but um, this one seems very small. C stick is good. Um, all the buttons feel great. Z, oh, Z is very noisy, um, though. I will say that. Listen to that. But yeah, I played this with uh, Double Dash Mario Kart, and it was just so perfect. This is great. So you'll be very happy if you get that. So there's an overview of some classic USB game controllers. If you're in the market for one, I hope this has helped narrow it down some options for you. 
And if you're just looking for an overall classic good USB gamepad, I'm going to plug the iBuffalo Classic USB gamepad one more time. Trust me, this is the one you want. If you're only looking to get one, it's my favorite out of everything I've shown you today. And I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I will see you again.